Beyonce, Elite Total Body Care, and Private Label Hair Care Company. Sorry, I had to get whatever was off of my shirt and it didn't come off. Um, I hope everybody is having an amazing day as per normal. Okay. Um, so this video, as the title said, we're going to talk a little bit about... Uh, just everywhere. A little bit about menopause, uh, menopausal hair loss, and some different things that you can do to help aid the body while you are going through that change. Um, this is a long overdue video. I kind of always skip over this video. Why? Because I have to, I'm one of those people where I have to do research first and I have to make sure that I am um, satisfied with my research. So with that being said, I always have, I have a book full of notes, you guys. So I'm always taking notes. I'm always learning. I'm always figuring out a way to help you guys. I'm always going through things that I know um, require a lot more knowledge than most are used to. And I'm just one of those people where knowledge is power and I love to learn and read so that I can be able to be of um, assistance to you guys going forward. So first things first, if you're joining the live as I am recording this live, Please go ahead and thumbs up this live right now. Close your chat and go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and make sure that you subscribe and turn on your notification bells so you guys know when I'm active and when I'm on YouTube. Okay? All right. So let's go for, for just dive right in. What is menopause? So menopause typically occurs somewhere between your 40s and your 50s. 50s that is the typical number that doesn't mean that you cannot have menopause at an earlier age um like people who have had hysterectomies at an early age that means what that's what you call early onset menopause then you have those who they are late bloomers and their menopause doesn't kick in until they're almost 50 or older and you have those who are medically um, induced into menopause there's so many different reasons why but basically, menopause is maturity of a woman's body and changes in a woman's hormones. It's really all about hormones. Menopause is something that is from within. There is nothing on this planet that you can do to stop menopause, okay? Nothing. There's no medication. There's no magic pill. There's nothing on this earth that will literally say, oh, well, I'm not going to have to deal with menopause because just the maturity in the body is going to mature in the hormones. And that title, menopause, just comes on on its own, okay? Um, more than likely, people like myself who don't have a thyroid, um, your body is controlled by hormones, and that's another thing that typically always um, comes right behind it. They're kind of like sisters. Um, thyroid issues, um, hormone changes, Birth control is one of those things that kind of is also a part of the menopause cycle. It's just, it's just, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right. So let me just move that person out of here. There we go. It's always one troll in there. FYI, hysterectomy doesn't bring on menopause. Ovaries are still intact with the hysterectomy, which is absolutely true. But on a medical standpoint, having a full hysterectomy can also bring on early onset menopause. But thank you so much for the information. It's always appreciated. But as I said, yes, early onset menopause can definitely occur having a full hysterectomy. Having a partial, it's a little bit different, but we are talking about full, not partial. And we are talking about typically what can happen, not saying that everyone is going to have that happen. So at the end of the day, the response or the answer is going to always be there is no way to not say you can never get into menopause. As long as your body matures, you mature. You can stay as young and as hip as you like in the brain, but your body will stay different. So it is what it is. All right, so let's talk about menopause and hair loss. Let me flip my book here because I told you guys I don't play when it comes on to my knowledge and my information. Like, I literally will read, 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 understand, and go back and read again and understand some more and then go back and read again to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm giving out the right information and that I know what I'm saying and that it's from trusted source. So with that being said, menopause is one of those things that I said is, occurs in women, okay? 
Men have something a little bit different, and it's not called menopause, it's just called old age. <laughs> but with women, it occurs in, like I said, between somewhere in our 40s and 50s, which is the typical number, but it can happen after 50, and it can also happen before 50. Um, the ovaries, let me explain how menopause works. And when it comes on to hair loss. Now, I'm not going to sit here and talk about everything that happens with menopause because that would be like seven years worth of video, right? But when it comes on to hair loss, when menopause occurs, basically what happens is your levels of estrogen and pro blah, estrogen and pro estrogen. I can never say this word. Estrogen and progestrogen. You guys get what I'm saying. Um, you stop producing it. Okay. So basically how it works is we're going to use this as a, as a, there we go. I like to use examples. So here's an example. This right here is your estrogen and your progesterone. I'm saying it wrong. I know I am. Right. But as the body goes into menopause or menopause becomes a part of your life, this circle starts to decrease and get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the body now starts to replace or create or induce what lies dormant in a female's body. So you guys know that they said that the female was created from a male's rib, right? Which I don't know how, how pro just thank you grasshopper i can never say it i don't know how everybody feels about the the word of god itself but me personally that's my only word so they say that women were created from a man's rib well as a part of a woman we actually have what lies dormant male hormones right so we have those hormones that literally lie dormant within our body and as our estrogen and progesterone progesterone whatever starts to decrease the male hormone now pops its head out and starts to take over and starts to increase, right? These hormones are what we call androgens. So if you guys have ever heard of a certain form of alopecia, it's called androgenic or androgenetic or andro whatever alopecia, right? That comes from the male hormone, which is testosterone, right? So androgens start to take over. And they start to push away all this estrogen and progesterone or whatever that our body makes. And it starts to take over. And when that starts to take over, if you think about your uncle at the barbecue, you think about your uncle Eros, your uncle Bunnies, your uncle Todd, your uncle Roberts, Mr. George Jefferson, uncle Jay, uncle Tommy. You ever notice that they always have that one uncle who's at the barbecue that's missing his entire part of his crown. It's nice and shiny and nothing's coming back and he doesn't care because he's a man. Well, that same hormone that lies in him lies in us, but it lies dormant in us until menopause starts to come and then he just pops his head out and he gets bigger and bigger and bigger and he starts to take over the little bit of hormone that we do have and now our male hormones just literally are all over the place. And that is where the hair loss comes from. Some females start to have facial hair, absolutely. Females, you start noticing the hair on your legs gets hard and brittle. You start noticing that your mustache starts coming in and all of a sudden now you can attach, you know? You, you know? <laughs> My heart is back there looking like. <laughs> um, you start noticing that you get facial hair. I remember one time in church, this is when I was really young, there was this lady who was always a part of the baptism group. And any time that she would talk, all I could focus on was the fact that she had an entire mustache and beard. And they would connect. And she was okay with that. And I used to think that it was the weirdest thing on the planet. Because I'm just like, this lady has a beard. And you know, when you're 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, you're looking like, this is something wrong. Something's wrong here, right? Not knowing that as you get older, this is a part of your, your natural born life. Like it just, it's something that just comes along naturally. So what happens is a lot of times we start getting those male hormones that come in, which is that androgen. And guess what? Androgen starts to suffocate our follicle, number one, and it starts to cause what we call hair loss. So if the follicle is suffocated, anything that you suffocate, that you strangle, what happens when you suffocate something? If you suffocate something, what happens? 
if you suffocate something, what happens? There's just one, one broad word that we can use. When you suffocate something, what happens? Anybody, type it in. It dies, okay? If you suffocate something, it dies. So that androgen comes in and it suffocates that follicle and now that follicle dies because that actual hormone is so strong that it is able to literally suffocate that follicle and that follicle no longer lives. So everything that was around it in that little bulb is now dead, right? And then that's when the hair loss starts. That's when you start seeing the androgenic, al androgenic alopecia. That's where that term came from. It comes from male hormone that lies dormant in the body, right? So when that starts to happen, that's not just the only thing that happens during menopause, but if we're talking in relates to the actual hair or in relation to the actual hair, the actual follicle, the scalp, the skin, all of this has to affect everything that has happens in our hormones as a woman, right? And our estrogen is one of the things that we have that is the almighty fighter in our body. But when that level drops naturally, because there's nothing that you can really do to control how much it is or how little you have or how, how much you have. Well, not, let, me, let me not say how little you have, but how much you have. Guess what? The body is doing what it naturally does and it's allowing the next thing to take over. And that's what happens during menopause and hair loss. Most women with menopause, typically the number one complaint is I noticed that my hair got a lot thinner. My hair doesn't look like what it looked like five years ago. My hair doesn't, I'm, I'm 45 right now, but when I was 35, I had a head full of hair. And then they'll show me a picture of their hair when they were 35 versus their hair at 45. They'll start noticing that their hairline starts to recede. They'll start noticing that their part gets a lot bigger in different places. It starts to spread open. And it's not even 100% from just doing different styles. It's just from the body doing what it's doing. The body is doing what it's supposed to do, right? So this is another reason why I tell people what you do in your younger years is going to affect you in your older years. So you want to be um, persistent on making sure that whatever you're doing to yourself now at this time of life, remind yourself that 10 years from now, this could affect you. 20 years from now, this could affect you. I bet you didn't know that at 25, when you decided to put on all these lace front wigs, lace front wigs, lace front wigs, and you suffocated those couple follicles that you did have, you didn't know 10 years later that those five follicles that you didn't care about, you no longer have, and it makes up one half of your crown. So this is why I tell people you have to be very careful when you're making your decisions for your hair. The amount of hair that you are born with is all you have. You will never see that you come with more hair than what you were born with, okay? So if you were born with an entire head of hair falling down your shoulders to the point where you can't even part your scalp, that's all you have. And once those follicles die, they die, okay? Once that bulb is gone, it's gone. All right, so let me pull my little book back out here. So let's talk about it. Hmm, I'm not going to go into the regimen yet. We'll leave that alone. Some side effects of menopause. Hot flashes, vaggy dryness, mood swings, insomnia, weight gain, weight loss, hair thinning, hair balding, hair loss, which is a form of just alopecia in its entirety, right? You start noticing that it's not just the hair on your head. It can also be the hair on your eyebrows. It can be your eyelashes. It can be your underarm hair. It can be your other hair, right? It can be the hair on your legs. You start noticing that your eyebrows get thinner, okay? You know why? Because menopause and thyroid clap each other's hands. Thyroid and hormones hold each other's hands, okay? So they are all a part of that one part of life, right? It's called the endocrine system, right? So anytime you have a problem with your thyroid, your first thing you're doing is going to who? Your endocrinologist, right? Help me with that. When you go to your endocrinologist, the first thing they're going to say is, hmm, okay, they're going to look at your age or even your general practitioner or your family doctor or your internal medicine doctor. The first thing they're going to say is, hmm, let's do some blood work and let's check your thyroid. You know why? Because thyroid and menopause clap each other's hands. 
thyroid and hormones hold each other's hands and i want you to think that in your mind and keep that in your mind when you are talking to yourself wondering what's going on because one claps each other's hands and it takes two hands one holds the other's hand and it holds on forever right so i don't have a thyroid so if you guys ever notice my weight will go up and down it doesn't really affect the hair on my head but it affects the hair on my eyebrows it affects my eyelashes but because i know how to take good care of those areas it doesn't affect me to the public but internally it does does rogaine or dht work i always i also take thyroid medication we'll talk about the rogaine in just a moment i will definitely talk about the rogaine in just a moment okay so what also happens during menopause the hair starts to grow slower so you would have said at 25 i noticed that my hair was growing like this if i cut it off it came right back okay if i cut it off it'll come right back now i noticed that if i lose a little bit of hair here maybe i decided to do a lace front maybe i decided to do some braids maybe i decided to do something of that that now that nature and now I, or I had a little trauma to an area. I noticed that it takes me a very long time for it to even sprout growth. That is also a part of menopause. Menopause causes slow growing, no growing, or growing thin. That's one, it's one of three things. Slow grow, no grow, or thin grow. Pick one. Pick your battle. Pick your battle. And another thing that helps the menopause progress even more when it comes on to the hair loss is because the first thing you do when you now see that your hair is getting thinner or you didn't even notice that your hair was getting thinner or you didn't care that your hair was getting thinner, you go and do things like protective that are not so protective hairstyles, braids, wigs. You start wearing a lot of ponytails. Ponytails are actually the easiest way to get traction alopecia before any other style. Why? Because it is the one thing that you think is so safe. You tell yourself this is so safe because my hair is out, not knowing that that one position that you keep putting your hair in, the middle of your head is remembering it and your hairline is remembering it. And when you're in menopause, the first thing that happens is the fragile areas start to go first. The hairline, dead smack in the crown, okay? So this is the crown of your head this is actually the crown if you look at kings and queens the crown don't sit right here it sits right here that's why they call this the crown of your head right between the parietal ridge and the occipital bone you have to put the things in his ear the right way they're not in there right okay increase in hormones so as the time goes by let's say you're just at the early part of menopause you'll start noticing that if you are not trying to take care of yourself when you are dealing with menopause in the early stages, don't wonder why in the later stages you are so far gone with your hair loss, with your hot flashes, you can't focus, you can't think, you're gaining weight left and right because you are not actually taking care of yourself when you first see the signs. You wait until it gets bad and that's everybody. I'll give you guys an example. You're riding down the road, okay? You're driving down a highway. I'll say I-4 because we're in Florida. So we're driving down I-4. And as we're driving down I-4, you notice that the car is doing this funny thing when you press the gas. But you know, you know it's a problem, but you're telling yourself like, mm, I don't think it's that big of a problem. I'm just keep going down the road, just keep going down the road. So you go a couple miles more and you notice now you're having to like really push the gas, but you're like, you know, I'm not really worried about this right now. Now is not the time. I am trying to get to this place. I have this to go to. I have no time to be stopping to go and check this problem out. I'm not calling anybody right now. So I just keep going. I'll do it later on. I'll wait till I get to where I'm going. Now you go a couple more minutes down the road and you notice your check engine light comes on. Mind you, these are the warning signs. You're getting the warning signs, okay? Now your check engine light comes on and you're looking at the check engine light like, I know this light is on and I knew I was supposed to do something about it. All right, all right. I'll just wait till I stop and then I'll call somebody. You know, I know the check engine light is important, but I'll just keep going. So you keep going and you keep going. And now your car screen on your car on your dashboard is reading to you. Alert, 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 alert. And in your mind, you're like, I'm still going to press the gas because I'm almost there. And then I'll worry about it. And guess what happens? But about five minutes before you get to where you're going, the car shuts off. 
because you wasted time you waited too long you ignored the signs it gave you the warnings it told you to call somebody you didn't it told you home oh, maybe something's not right let me step back a second and check this out you didn't you kept trying to push through it because time is going and you don't have time and this is not something you want to worry about right now you know it's a problem but you're not worried about it right now this is the menopause talking to you now the hair loss the hair thinning is coming you know you need to go get yourself checked out but after after this after after i take little timmy through graduation it's cool i only got two more years and by year 1.27 you can't even get little timmy to graduation because guess what now all of it's gone and you weren't proactive you didn't care enough about it at the beginning when you got the warning signs to say you know what let me let me get let me get on to this let me get get a, a hold of this and even if i can't get a hold of it at least i know i was proactive enough to deal with it from the beginning and it may actually help me towards the end right so that's what people do that is what people do okay you start doing things like well you know what now that the car has broken down you start saying okay i'm gonna take it to the shop when you take it to the shop now I'm, i like to use analogy so everybody understands what i'm saying now when you get the car to the shop and the, the auto shop is telling you like listen mind you the auto shop is your doctor the auto shop is telling you like listen your car needs an engine okay we can get you a, a a somewhat cheaper engine this is your doctor talking to you okay but you need to do this now so while you're at the doctor he's telling you like listen we need you to start changing your diet we need you to start taking some multivitamins we need you to start exercising we need you to lower your stress we need you to do all these things the auto mechanic is telling you, listen, you need to change the gas that you put in your car. You need to also go ahead and get that tune up on the transmission because this is why the light came on. You also need this part on your engine, but we can hold off on that part in your engine, but we definitely need to get this tune up going. And your excuse right now is right now is not the time. What's going to get me going right away? What's going to allow me to be able to move the car right now? And then I worry about the other stuff later, right? I'll worry about the other stuff later. What can get the car moving right, right now at the lowest price? with the least amount of time and the least amount of effort. He says, okay, well, let's just go ahead and change the oil. So your doctor now tells you, okay, well, let's just start the multivitamins. Okay, no problem. I'm gonna start the multivitamins right now. All right, good. So you go ahead and change the oil and start your multivitamins. You guys see me pairing them together, okay? Then you say, all right, all right, so what can I do to make this not happen until I can get to whatever I need to get to? Because right now I don't have the time. Right now this is not my, my focus. My focus is not this right now. Okay, so we could just go ahead and do such and such. So now you tell yourself, all right, I'm just going to go to a stylist and put a wig on. I'm just going to go ahead and get me some braids and I'll just give it a break. I'll take it easy on my car for a second until, it, until I get the time or until I get the funds or whatever the case may be. Mind you. You don't know that you've created another problem. So now you leave the auto mechanic shop. You leave your doctor's office. You go cover your hair up with the braids, the wigs, the weaves. Not knowing, same thing. You leave with your car. You go ahead and just get the oil change. Mind you, check engine light's still on. It's still talking to you. It's still telling you something's not right. And you just keep going, keep going, keep going. Until all of a sudden the car literally goes out on you 100%. No different from your hair. You go and you put all these things on your head. Now you have no hairline. Now you have a bald spot here. Now your hair is as soft and as thin and as damaged as cotton. Now you have no way to actually cover this up because you've allowed this problem to go so far that you are literally at a stop. And that is what women and not just menopause, but everybody does. Menopause is just at a faster rate. It's at a faster rate. It's moving quick. It's moving quick. And if you had caught it when you were 40, instead of waiting until you were 51, I think you would have had a much better outcome at this point. Now, sometimes you don't have that control. Sometimes you can't stop the car from stopping. Sometimes you didn't even know that the car was having a problem. All you saw was the car was good and it just ran out. It just ran out on you. Now, that's different. But when you see the signs and you know the signs and you know man okay hold on crystal talked about this she said at the beginning i start noticing that my mood start changing whatever 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 you start saying well let me go ahead and start this multivitamin let me be gentle on my hair let me make sure that i'm taking care of the little hair that i have right now so that it's not even tinier of hair when i have it later right 
if I'm, if everybody's on the same page as me with my analogy, because I want to make sure everybody's following what I'm saying, put a one in the chat. If you understand what I'm saying, put a one in the chat. Thank you. So we are on the same page. So we talked about the labs that you can do, right? I kind of said it in between when I was talking about the auto mechanic shop. So on a serious note, now I'm going to take the analogy out and I'm just going to put that to the side because you guys are understanding what I'm saying. So first things first, when you notice that the changes in life are coming, it's not just mentally, it happens physically, right? You start noticing that you're having hot flashes, you start sweating really easily, You'll be one place and you just notice your whole body's on fire. You start noticing that your hair is shedding a lot more. And you know your birthday just came around. You're knocking on 40. You're knocking on 50. You're noticing the body's changing. First things first, you need to go and see a doctor. First things first, across the board. The reason why, and you guys know I'm kind of iffy. I'm like halfway when it comes on to modern medicine, right? But at the same time, go get your blood work done. Make sure your thyroid is okay because menopause and thyroid, I told you guys, what do they do? They clap hands together. They don't have to hold each other, but they clap hands and it takes two hands to clap, okay? They clap hands together. Then you notice slowly as things get worse and worse and worse, you start noticing that it's now holding hands and they're holding hands tight and you become inseparable. Now you have a thyroid issue. So that's why I say go ahead, get those levels checked. Every single year it should be a part of your regular routine, especially when you mature in age. I'm not going to say when you get old because everybody looks at older than a different number. But as your body matures, you definitely want to check this out every single year. Every year because thyroid, hair loss, menopause, hormones, cycle, which is menstruation, menopause, menstrual. Hello. Okay, let's make sure that we're all on the same page here. They all dwibble around each other. They just fly around and they just wait for each other to clip each other's wings. And all of a sudden you start seeing these different problems come around. So more than, more than anything else, make sure you go and see your doctor and get your levels checked every single year. And by levels, I mean thyroid and blood counts. That tells you a whole heap. Okay, thyroid, blood count. And I'm one of those people where I feel like everybody has their different specialty. So my family doctor is not going to always be the one that's going to check my levels for my thyroid. I'd rather go to a specialist. I want to go to an endocrinologist because they're going to go deeper. The endocrine system is diabetes, thyroid, right? I think liver is a part of that too. Kidney might be a part of that, but I might be wrong, right? So you want to check those different things and everybody has a different specialty. So your family doctor is only going to skim the surface, right? Your family doctor is only going to skim the surface. Your endocrinologist is going to now go deeper into the surface. And then if you have to go any farther from there, then you can go from there. Holistic medicine, same thing. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, you want to definitely make sure that you are watching what you're eating and how and what time you are eating it. It's easy, it's easy for me to say, but it's hard for us to do. Because as I'm telling you that, I also have to tell myself that. Because we get tempted by little things. There'll be a commercial that says they got a brand new Whopper out, and you must try it every five days until you're satisfied that it's not good. So it's, I understand, we're all in the same boat, but what you eat is what you are. Okay? All right. So number three different things that you can actually do to the hair and rogaine keeps popping up on on the um chat here so we'll discuss rogaine really quick rogaine is one of those things that we call minoxidil they're all in the same family minoxidil is a medication that you can utilize to help regrow stubborn or dead follicles right but minoxidil is also one of those things where if you grow this flower with minoxidil, you guys know I like to use things, right? I'll use my straw. So this is the minoxidil and the scalp, okay? This is the scalp, the cup is the scalp, okay? The juice inside my cup is the minoxidil, okay? Once the juice is gone, mm -hmm, I can no longer drink from this cup and there is no need for a straw. 
The straw was your actual strand of hair. Once minoxidil is gone or depleted or you stop using it like Rogaine and all those different companies that utilize, if you look at Rogaine and look at the actual ingredient, it's called minoxidil. They all contain it, right? Once that minoxidil is gone or you stop using it or you stop pouring it in your cup, there is no use for the cup. The follicle dies with it. So that's another reason why a lot of trichologists, a lot of hair loss practitioners, they all kind of try to stay away from things that have minoxidil because they know what the end result is. It will give you a full grass. It, it will give you a full flower bed of flowers. It will literally spring flowers everywhere. And then the moment you stop fertilizing with that minoxidil, the flowers die because they were grown by minoxidil or Rogaine or all of those other company names that they like to use to disguise the fact that it's just minoxidil amongst other things. So I try to tell people to try to stay away from things that are powered by minoxidil because I know that at the end of the day, once you stop using it, it stops growing and that follicle that it grew potentially will die. Okay. So keep that in mind because I know a lot of you are buying it on Amazon and all those places, which is cool. You do what you have to do, but just don't use it as a permanent fix because it's not. You have to continue that forever. You have to continue it forever. That is why these companies make so much money because they know the moment you stop using it, you're like, oh my gosh, it was working so well. So let me go and buy 12 months of subscription of this road game because it was working so well. No, it was working so well because that's what it's made to do. Grow, 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 grow until you stop using it and it dies. So it's now become a lifetime lifestyle change. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, so let's talk about some styles that you can do or some things you can do in regards to styling your hair when you are dealing with menopause. The number one thing, and a lot of you won't agree because most people who have menopause, they typically either want this or they want the opposite. But typically with menopausal females or people who are in the midst of menopause, short hair is actually your best friend. And I'll tell you guys why, because I know a lot of you might not agree. Short hair actually is your best friend. Why? Because it gives the appearance of volume, it gives the appearance of density, and it can easily hide thinning, easily by manipulating that short style. It also helps when you have hot flashes. It also helps when you're going through those moments where it's just like, ugh, you just feel ugh. And having hair touching your neck and your shoulders is not your best friend. But it hides the fact that the hair might be thinning or you might be losing hair in certain places. It is also the easiest to manage because you can allow yourself to sweat and flash as much as you like without having that drape of hair over you. So having a short style actually won't hurt when you're dealing with menopause in the midst of you trying to help um, remedy what's going on. It might not cure, but it can definitely help to lessen the effects and it will definitely help to lessen the, the look of not having as much hair as you had before. Okay, so I know some of you are just like, no, I want my hair to stay long forever. Okay, well, that's your choice. But if you're trying to disguise or hide the fact that you have this problem going on, you are trying to help remedy what you have going on, then I definitely would say a short style will definitely probably be, it won't even definitely, it, would, it will definitely be your best friend. And I know it's hard to understand, but it's a fact. It's a fact. I can tell you guys, I love my short hair. I'm not even in menopause. Some days I feel like I am having because I'll wake up in the middle of the night burning up and I'm only 35 years old. But that doesn't stop me from getting there, right? That doesn't stop anything for me, okay? Um, try to stay away from um, braids, weaves, and wigs. And as convenient as they are, as happy as they make you feel because they make you feel beautiful, right? It creates a bigger problem later on. I wanted to say it in the right way. It creates a bigger problem later on. So let's start with the wigs. And we'll use wigs along with lace front installations, whether it be the extensions, the lace front, a closure, or a full-on wig. That pressure that it is putting around the hairline, keep in mind that is the actual part of the head that thins first. 
when you're dealing with menopause or any form of alopecia, the hairline suffers first. The hairline suffers first, okay? Then the crown suffers next. So when thinning happens, it's typically in the hairline first because that is the one place that we suffocate the most. That's also the one place that we put the most tension on. So when you're dealing with menopause and you already know that you are 75% there while the average person who's not in menopause is about 25% there, you're already creating a bigger problem. You're already creating a bigger problem because you're suffocating the follicle yourself. Mind you, during menopause, that androgen that's coming in, that, that, that hormone that's taking over your female hormone and pushing it out, and now that male hormone is coming on out, that male hormone is knocking on the door. Like, listen, you got like three fibers, three, three follicles left right here, three pieces of hair. Let me get all three of those, please, because you don't need them. So you're already there. You're already there. So you're inducing the problem. You're making it worse. So what I tell people is definitely oxygen is going to be your best friend. It doesn't matter if it's oxygen on the skin, the teeth, or the hair. They all need it. They all need it. And the follicle itself, that blood flow, everything from within has to come out. And the more you cover it up, the more you suffocate it. So you're just helping the, the, the androgen, that androgen hormone or androgen itself take right over. You don't even have to have that anymore. Now you're doing the job yourself. Okay. If you notice women who are dealing with menopause that wear a lot of wigs, their hairline is usually the most up. It is usually the most up. Because that literally, they are doing the job for themselves. You are not having to do anything else. Okay? Same thing with the ponytails. A lot of times when you start having this situation where you're going through menopause, the first thing you want to do is you want your hair up because you don't want it all over you. You don't want when you're having the flashes, it just feels like something's draped over you. So you start doing the ponytails. You start pulling your hair up a lot. That too can create what we call what? Traction alopecia. Okay, so now menopause and traction alopecia are clapping each other's hands too. Now you start high-fiving different hands because you're bringing in other problems, right? Now menopause and traction are touching each other. And guess what traction is doing? It's now holding hands with scarred traction alopecia because you've already helped kill the follicle. Do you recommend cutting it all off? No, I would never recommend cutting it all off because that's just going to make you feel worse. But I definitely recommend start taking better care of yourself and taking better care of your hair. And when I say taking better care of yourself, exercise, eating as best you possibly can, eating right, drinking a lot more water, drinking a lot more water. And I am definitely one of those people that needs to be preaching to myself because water is not my best friend, but it definitely needs to be your best friend, right? Drinking a lot of water, helping to get those toxins out. Get your internal system right. Hormones, vitamins, okay? Hormones, vitamins. I tell people this all the time. Do you know one of the most underrated products that we carry at Elite Hair Care USA is our hair, skin, and nail vitamins? Because people are so, so stirred up on having to take that one extra step for the day. Taking that one extra step by taking one actual vitamin for the day can change your entire life. But our hair, skin, and nail vitamins, it's called Elite Advance, you guys. It literally is the most underrated product that we have. Because most people want to, all they want to do is when they see the hair growing, you run towards biotin. And you say, well, biotin is going to fix this. Well, biotin is only one of the B vitamins. It's one B vitamin. One. When the body needs calcium, it needs iron. It needs potassium. It needs the B vitamins. Yes. It needs vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin K. It needs vitamin D, especially African-American women where we don't like the sun. So we are always deficient in vitamin D. Vitamin D, when your levels drop too low, you know what it affects? Your calcium. When your calcium drops too low, you start noticing that your fingers start tingling. You start noticing that your bones start aching. All of this stuff goes together, but instead you run towards biotin. Yeah, girl, I found me, a, uh, they had like 50,000 MCGs at Sam's Club and it was only $16.99, so I bought it. And now you take a biotin every single day instead of just taking an actual hair, skin, and nail vitamin because they are all one system. They go together. 
one system. They go together. Biotin can only aid a piece of that system. Okay? So keep that in mind. Um, we talked about no added tension, being gentle. And when I say being gentle, I'm, I have a... I have a 50-50 with the being gentle. And listen to why I say 50-50 with being gentle. Being gentle does not mean only finger detangle your hair and allow it to tangle. You guys know I'm big on making sure you brush your hair every single day. You comb your hair every single day. You need that blood flow, right? Finger detangling cannot create blood flow. And some of you use that as an excuse to be nasty in the first place. Okay? Finger detangling does not, does not do much. You, you need to take good care of the hair. Brush the hair. I always tell you guys in the movies, in the older movies, if you ever notice, the women were always sitting at their vanity and they were always brushing their hair with that beautiful bristle, boar bristle brush or bristle boar brush or whatever. And their hair was always nice and shiny and long and healthy. You know why? Because blood flow is what triggers hair growth. Can I say that any slower? Blood flow is what triggers hair growth. As the body gets older or matures, you start noticing that the blood itself starts to quaggle more. Your clotting factor goes up. Mind you, this is a part of maturity. Hello? Okay? So keep that in mind. That's why I said I'm 50-50 when it comes on to the be gentle. Being gentle doesn't mean, you know, I'm just going to take out this tangle this week. That's just called nasty. Brush your hair. Comb your hair, okay? But you don't have to go through and rake through it, right? You know what I also call being gentle? If you get your hair braided every Thursday, every three weeks, every seven weeks, and then you take it out and put more braids in, that's not being gentle. That's actually being rough because you literally are putting more tension on the hair on top of more tension. And that weight on top of hair that already is soft sad and brittle is making it worse mind you gravity works on everything okay so if you continue to do the same negative behavior that you've been doing and you wonder why your hairline is receding you're doing these protective that are not so protective styles don't wonder why the hair is thinning anyway you already are losing density so now you're compressing it even more and I'm not against those styles, but I'm definitely one that understands moderation in everything. You don't do everything over and over and over and over and over again, especially if you're dealing with menopause. Okay. Lastly, um, you can use topical growth products. Topical growth products, a lot of you, like I said, love that Rogaine. Mm, enjoy. I'm not a Rogainer. I believe more in more natural, holistic type things, um, essential oils, that kind of thing. You know what the reason why I bred life to Elite Hair Care USA? My first product at Elite Hair Care USA was our Goddess Hair Repair Serum. And I created that product with the intention of dealing with clients who have alopecia. Not knowing that alopecia was a part of menopause, it was a part of thyroid disease. And I knew it was a part of thyroid disease because I had already had it then. I had already didn't have a thyroid right? But I knew that there was a problem out there and I knew that I didn't need a product that had minoxidil. I could have easily gotten one of those and offered that as a part of my line and grew back everybody's hair. And then five years down the road, my business doesn't exist because now everybody's looking at it like, well, her product didn't grow my hair and then it fell right back out. Right. So I decided to go towards the power of CBD, a more natural, a more holistic way of dealing with it. Right. And add on some essential oils, add on some props, some oils that have properties of hair regrowth, garlic oil, onion oil. Those are amazing when it comes on to actual um, alopecia. That is the best thing. A lot of people sleep on garlic and onion. You think that because they smell, they don't work. Garlic oil and onion oil are a bomb when it comes on to hair loss or alopecia. Zinc. I made sure that all of my serums contain zinc. You know why? Because zinc helps those who have a lot of autoimmune issues. It's in the blood, right? Zinc is definitely a bestie. Zinc, garlic oil, onion oil, lavender essential oil, hemp seed oil, CBD. A lot of people don't know what CBD is. CBD, can it can have THC or not have THC. The CBD that we use in all of our formulation is non-THC because you don't need the THC for the health benefit. You need the THC for the high. Nobody's not getting high on our product. 
right? So there's no THC. That's not required. That doesn't actually boost the product, right? So that's why when I built my line and I built my brand, I built it on products that were made specifically for people who are dealing with alopecia, not knowing that three years later, I'd be the one talking about menopause. I'd be the one talking about thyroid disease. I'd be the one talking about autoimmune diseases and creating products towards it. Creating products towards it, right? So those are the different things that you can do. I'm trying to see if I wrote any more notes. No. There's other things that you can do, which I will tell you guys. There's something called PRP. PRP has to be done by a certified medical doctor. Um, they call it platelet-rich plasma. It's not, I'm not going to say it's very invasive but it, you, invasive, but it uses your plasma to help regrow that follicle. But here's where I disagree with it. Even though they are taking that plasma and they're harvesting it and it's yours, if your inside is not already good, then you're just harvesting it with bad soil, if that makes sense. So some people might like it, some people don't, but it is an option for you guys. And I definitely wrote it down because I knew that that was an option. Hormone replacement is another one when you're dealing with menopause, you can deal with hormone replacement. Hormone replacement is just like when you have thyroid disease. That's called hormone replacement. That's exactly what we're doing. Synthroid, unithroid, armothroid, somebody's throid, everybody's throid. That's all hormone replacement. Um... And I think that was really it in regards to those. Uh, yeah, that was it. So let me go ahead. I'm going to read some of you guys' questions because I know you guys have been typing your lives away. I'll read some of your questions and then we are going to conclude the live. And I'm going to make my way home. Um, I actually was sitting here waiting on my daughter to have swim practice anyway, so it worked out. All right, let's see here. My hair is thick in the sides and the back and thin on the front and top. Cynthia, that's actually something that happens a lot. Think about my analogy when I talked about the uncle at the barbecue. We all have one, the George Jefferson, Uncle Errol, Uncle Billy, Uncle Todd. You ever notice that they don't have any hair right here, but all the back here be nice and full. Look like Krusty the Clown. It's all a part of it. That's that male hormone. That's androgen. It's just peeping on in. Sometimes it comes earlier than others. Let's see. I received your hair products and used them yesterday and my hair is in heaven. Your hair clarity shampoo is the best. Thank you, Billy. Is the extra strength serum too strong for a person going through menopause? None of our serums are too strong. The only thing that I can say about our serums in regards to strength some people it tingles and they don't like the tingling right because we also have um it's not tea tree peppermint essential oil and sometimes the essential oils can cause what we call a slight tingle so what we tell people is if you are using the super growth which the super growth was created with the mindset of helping those who are dealing with autoimmune diseases right because it has pumpkin seed oil and also black seed oil and also um cbd as well so we created it with that concept to help those who are dealing with a lot of the autoimmune disease issues. But sometimes it can be more of a tingle factor and they don't like the tingling. So you can do one of two things. You can go down to the lower strength, which would be the Goddess Hair Repair Serum. The Goddess Hair Repair Serum does not contain pumpkin seed oil and black seed oil, right? Among some of the other essential oils and oils or emollients that we have in there. Or you can dilute the super growth product with a little bit of coconut oil which has to be fractionated fractionated coconut oil is in liquid form or you can use a little bit of jojoba oil and that will lessen that effect that i've seen some people have it some don't so it really just depends i know crusty the comment y'all laugh i'm sorry <laughs> i heard you say something about iron i have low iron i'm anemic so yeah, if your iron is low or you have anemia or anything of that nature, remember iron in the blood, it's blood. That has to do with the blood. If the blood is not good or the blood is tainted or the soil is muddy or the soil is a little too wet or the soil got a little bit of worms in it, guess what? If you don't treat the soil and help the soil, then the soil itself is not gonna grow. It's not gonna harvest. You're not gonna get anything. That seed is not gonna do anything but lay there. So iron is all a part of that too. You got to get your iron levels in check. How you do that? Eat things that are high in iron. 
Okay, you can take your iron supplements and still eat things like beets, blend beets, blend beets are probably the highest in iron that you can get. They taste disgusting, but blended drink them. Juicing is also a great thing to do. It'll give you the rawest form of that actual nutrient. What can I do with my hair? I work out and it's dry and lost shiny. I have a relaxed hair. My hair is colored. So SR Caldwell, I would save that question for one of my hair care Q&As. The questions that I'm answering right now are in regards to menopause and everything that we talked about today in regards to menopause. So I try to stay on subject and not jump off too quick. What is the name of your hair vitamin again? It's called Elite Advanced. Elite Advanced. It is a hair, skin, and nail vitamin. It is an advanced formula of hair, skin, and nail vitamin. It's not just biotin. People get that thing so misconstrued because guess what? Once your body starts to get used to the biotin, you can take 6 million tablets and it will do nothing. You're giving yourself one B vitamin. Hmm. I have a bald spot in the front of my head from wearing a wig with a comb in it. So what can I use to grow it back? Tanisha, number one, you got to stop wearing the wig with the comb in it. Number two, if it's on a situation that we're talking about with menopause, that kind of thing. Vitamins, most definitely taking the tension off the area. Um, you can use any of our topical products. You want to make sure that you also have a regimen, which I didn't even mention that. Having a solid regimen is going to be your best friend. Okay, a solid regimen right so for those of you who are dealing with the traction part of the problem where it's on the hairline your regimen is going to be making sure that you shampoo and condition at least once every 10 to 14 days hair repair and growth shampoo and conditioner it's rich in all of the nutrients that are needed when it comes on to actual hair growth right and then you can use the edge repair the edge repair is a two-part system it has its own serum and that serum is also powered by hemp seed oil okay it's powered by hemp seed oil and it has its cream base which that serum and the cream go together you use it once every three days that is going to help with the hairline as long as it's not scarred once it's scarred that's the car that broke down that you didn't care about okay so keep that in mind i'm trying to go back i'm like trying not to miss any of you guys' stuff can I alternate all your products between uses? Absolutely. Our products are intermixable and interchangeable. This is great information. Let me know that I am on to something. Thank you. Are you booked until 2022? Miranda, November and December schedule opens next Monday. Thank you guys for listening, for everybody that's saying thank you for the information. I appreciate you guys. I told you guys I don't play. I got my whole book right here. This is my Harry Potter book. Tried them all. Looking forward to trying products by a knowledgeable real woman who cares. I'm already in menopause, have no thyroid. So, Cynthia, I'm knocking on the door, honey, but God is good. Only thyroid issue, but I have really no side effects. Girl, you hit the nail on the head with me today on these subjects. You speaking on that for the info. Love you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, guys. Do you suggest people to wear their hair naturally or get a blowout? This is for women who are natural and don't want to wear wigs anymore. I mean, Fabulous Diva, a blowout is still natural. I mean, you can get a blowout. You can wear it in its natural form. You can do wash and goes. It's really just how you want to style it. Cynthia, I'm a go-to for the hair repair and growth shampoo, conditioner, the goddess hair repair serum, or the super growth serum. Like, those are my babies. Those are my baby babies. How do we order your products? You go to EliteHairCareUSA.com. It's just like my YouTube name. EliteHairCareUSA.com. Some women stress themselves about the change of life, but if we consciously embrace it, the effects may not be as bad once our attitudes change. Stress in general is not good. Same thing in menopause. Absolutely, Grasshopper, you are 100% right. And stress is also the biggest part. It's the silent killer. It's the one that you hear nothing about. You don't know it's there. You just know that you're stressed. You don't know that it's literally taking a toll on your, enti excuse me, your entire body. Belinda, it's EliteHairCareUSA.com. So if you take my YouTube name, which is EliteHairCareUSA, 
put it all together and just add dot com. Thank you, Kingston. All right, you guys. So I hope this video was of some goodness to you guys. I hope you guys really wrote down a lot of this information. I definitely have a ton of other videos coming. If you're not already following my Elite Total Body Care channel, please go and subscribe to that channel, you guys. Elite Total Body Care. That channel is where I talk about things in regards to the body, like the JJ. I also talk about business. Like that's my channel to just do everything other than hair. But I'm really passionate about body care and hair care. Like I'm into it. Like I just kind of like fell into it and I just love it. And I'm not going to go away from that. So Elite Total Body Care is my other channel. I would appreciate if everybody could go over to that channel, subscribe, and just watch a couple minutes of the different videos. I'm trying to get that channel back monetized through YouTube because YouTube cut me off because I wasn't using the channel. And they warned me, just like I said, you get the warning signs, and now I'm paying for it. So I need everybody to go just watch a couple minutes of those different videos. I have business videos on there, talk about how to build your credit, talking about how to care for the JJ weight loss all of that stuff is on that channel so i would appreciate if everybody could go to that channel if someone could type it in the chat for me elite total body care that is my channel you'll see a picture of me with blue hair please go subscribe to that channel and just watch one of the videos you guys i am 1100 hours away from going back to being monetized so please i need everybody to watch at least five minutes of a video Thank you, guys. Thank you, Octavia. My mom and dad had that problem on both top and back. And do I need all of your products? <laughs> you don't need all of my products, Cynthia. I'm not even that type of person. Get what you need. That's all. <sighs> all right, you guys. I will talk to you guys later in the next video. I do have a new video that I'm uploading on the Total Body Care channel. And then I have another video to upload, uh, upload on the Elite Hair Care channel. Either channel, you guys, just subscribe to both. Watch a couple videos on the other channel. Please, everybody, go and watch at least 5 to 10 minutes of a video on the other channel. I need 1,100 more hours, and I need to do this by December. I need to do this by December. So I need everybody to watch a couple videos on the other channel. And I would highly, highly, highly say thank you really, really fast. Really, really fast. Thank you guys right away. Please just go and watch those videos so I can get my channel back monetized because I feel so naked without that channel and I neglected that channel. That was my first channel. All right. Peace. And thanks for watching.